Good morning everyone, Eric from Nomadic Fanatic. How you guys doing? I'll be uploading this video with some Nomad internet link below in the video description. What's going on today? Well, you guys are probably curious. Going to the airport. Going to the airport to pick up a friend. <laughs> Driving through St. Louis is uh, not a fun experience for me, but um, I've got some life changes going on, and um, I, I will tell you more about it when I get my friend back to the shop here. So for now, driving through St. Louis traffic at 7.30 in the morning. Yay! <laughs> I'm here at the uh, cell phone parking lot of Terminal 2 here. St. Louis International Airport. So I'll wait here till she gets off her flight and tells me where to go pick up. Gonna be another warm one today here in September in St. Louis. Gonna be 92 degrees still. Don't get me wrong, it's not raining, <laughs> but it is still hot here at the end of summer in the Midwest. Ooh wee. <laughs> That's interesting. I moved over to the other end of the lot where the porta potties are, and I noticed this board here, which is really helpful. It shows all the uh, incoming planes. Look at the bottom one there Tampa Southwest. It says it's in range. I think that means it's about to land. It's on time, 8 15. So, yeah, awesome. All right, I'll uh, cut back in now. Just started raining here in East Alton. 92 degrees in September was almost a record, but we still have to have a little bit of rain. It's been a busy, crazy day for me here at the shop go inside and have a little chat here i'm leaving in the morning by the way um however i guess what i want to say is that i have decided to simplify things and reduce some i don't want to call it stress but clearly reduce some baggage yeah we'll go with that banna white she gone. Vanna White's gone. I, I sold Vanna White to a patron. Uh, we had lunch today at Mr. Poncho's, and uh, I think Vanna White and Deb are going to be perfect for each other. I'm so glad it's going to someone I know so well. I didn't announce that it was for sale anywhere else except patron, and I'm really glad that worked out. Um, <laughs> it hurts me. It pains me all the work that I put in for no reason. I never really even explored in her. I just did all the hard work and then sold it for the same price that I paid for it. Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah. Moving forward, let's, let's not do that again. Also, two years and two months ago today, I purchased Roxy the Rebel. I got rid of my Rebel. I sold Roxy the Rebel. I feel like just having so many different license plates and things to insure and all that, now that I've got my Class A back up and running, Tater Tot's running good, it just seemed like the right time to trade in those two assets for some cash in case something else happens later in my life. You know, I'm not super excited about losing those two things, but also it is what it is. I am dealing with Never mind. It, everything is awesome. Everything's fine. Uh, just had to fix a few things here today also. But like I said, no matter what, in the morning we're getting out of Illinois. So everything's good. Sean and Jill are going to take care of things here if it needs to be taken care of here at the storage unit. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say on that front. Uh, am I done with motorcycles? No, heck no. I've been riding motorcycles my whole life. I'm sure I'll get another one later. Am I done with camper van class b life i tried it. it it's something i've wanted my whole life i've lived in a lot of camper vans i actually had a real good functioning mechanically sound camper van and did i like it eh it's not the same as the class a i like all that extra room <laughs> so i personally much prefer miranda the, the whole miranda and tater talk combo I've actually got tater top parked up front, but you know, towing the car, th this is actually easier to get the car disconnected from this than it is to get a motorcycle off the rack. But again, I'm not saying I'm done. I just, I may beef up the rack and the hitch and be able to tow a, that was thunder, a bigger bike later on. But right now, it's gonna be Miranda, Tater Tot, Jackson, Tara, and I. There's Tater Tot chilling there, getting a little 
car wash from the hot, hot rain. So, Miranda it is with broken slides and other issues and everything. We, we move forward for, for, for now at least. But Eric, if you don't travel with a motorcycle, then you can't have Skeletor on the back. Hold my beer. <laughs> what? That's right, Skeletor's still coming with us. Chilling on the ladder. I gotta cut the uh, zip zip ties there, but I think he looks really good. He's smiling, he's happy. He's a happy, happy skeleton. All right, good morning, everyone. I ran an errand this morning before we leave the shop here. To put this into context, y'all remember when my Onan generator went out on me again at the Schoolie Swarm? The, um, the code I got, once again, was code 36. Uh, if you haven't been following this channel, I have invested, I've counted the receipts. This Onan generator on board, I have invested over $11,000 in repairs and parts in less than three years. Over $11,000. You could, you could have literally have bought three brand new 5,500 Onan generators with zero hours for $11,000. But yet, it, we keep fixing it and then it lasts a month and then I get error code unknown every single time. It's code 36. Uh, before I show you what's in the smart car right now, remember that little backup generator that I traveled with for maybe six months and never needed? I gave it away. <laughs> so that's why I didn't have it at the swarm as many people ask. So I just went to uh, Lowe's and picked up another inverter generator. This one is a 2,500 uh, running watts, 3,300 starting watts, which means it will run my roof AC on here, right? I'm gonna test it out first. This one's lighter, it's quieter, and it's more fuel efficient, and it's gonna be stored in one of these open bays. Not this one, but the one on the other side. All right, so one thing to point out is I'm really used to how loud the Onan 5500 is. Um, my Craftsman generator is running right now. It's literally running. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> it's super, super quiet. I'm gonna put a load on it in just a second. Got her filled up with oil, cranked up on the second pole, and it is super quiet. I can't believe that. Let me plug in my adapter. We'll fire up a roof AC, which will pull 1700 watts. This will pull 22 uh, running watts, and we'll see what changes here. All right, got the RV plugged in, and I have gone into my Victron app and changed it to a 15 amp max draw. If I were running my own generator, I could select 50 amp, but we're gonna stick with 15 amp max there and hit OK currently at 33 watts out. So I'm gonna go turn the AC on. All right, the fan just kicked on and we're at 292 watts. Just waiting for the compressor to kick on in there. Not too bad, 1146 watts there. I don't know if you can see that. And she's running. That's as loud as she gets. <laughs> Doesn't even sound like it's running. Boy feels so good to be back on the road exploring. It is hot here in Missouri. I checked the weather. It's actually hotter here in Columbia, Missouri than Orlando, Florida, Tampa Bay, and Daytona Beach. It's hotter in Columbia. 93 degrees in September. Woo! <laughs> Got to figure something out when we get parked. It's a beautiful day though. Look at all these blue skies. Way too much blue skies. It's ridiculous. All right, we're getting back on a back road here, two-laner, about an eight-mile detour off the interstate, but I'm going to go check out my one of my uh, favorite free campgrounds right on the river and see if there's any spots open for a night to chill. All right, slow down here. This is my turn. Now everyone's going to know what it's called. It's not a secret anymore. It said Harriman Hill Access. It doesn't say campground, though, or anything. It just says Harriman Hill. And yeah, we're gonna have a dirt road here. Sorry, tater tot back there. But I'm gonna go really slow. I'm in no hurry. I've also come down here, made the one mile trek down this dirt gravel road and found no sites available before. It happens, but there is like a little turnaround area where you can stage and plan your next move. It's, I think it's, we're gonna be okay. Oh my gosh, boat launch off to our left right here to the river, which looks really clear. And ladies and gentlemen, we are the only ones here. <laughs> this sign says camping area, Missouri Conservation Department, vehicles on graveled areas only. 
and we get to pick any site we want. I think I'm gonna back into this first big long slot right here. I'm gonna back in. But Eric, you can't back up or reverse with a blue ox system towing a Hold my beer. That $2 bungee cord, it's magic. Uh, I'm gonna bring out the uh, Craftsman inverter generator, get the AC going here, and then we'll check this place out. Those cicadas. This is the first place I was ever at where I heard a cicada, by the way. That was, what, four or five years ago. And they, all summer long, they're loud. Dang it. So I'm out here trying to figure out why this won't work with my air conditioner. I just turned the air conditioner off. Every time I did it all three times, it automatically shut off. And I was thinking, why was this working at the shop and it's not working here where I need it to work? Well, it turns out that my Victron automatically sends that 1200, 1300 watt charge to the batteries. We were floating at the shop. Now I have to wait until this charges up the batteries before I can use it for air conditioning because it needs every bit of that wattage on here to run the air conditioner. Dang it. I actually Googled it and uh, found that out, but also you can parallel these and get a second one and then have 5,000 watts. So, um, huh, huh, whoops. It worked at the shop because the batteries were floating. Now my batteries are bulk. All right, shut her down. All right, I know what the next move is, guys. I'm gonna tell you in just a minute what my plan is, but my Odin generator is running currently. What have I done? Well, first, let me tell you I'm doing everything wrong, so don't do what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. But Robert told me about this idea. Uh, take off the uh, compartment side, which you're not supposed to do, and I uh, picked up one of these little floor blowers, blowing a bunch of uh, air through here, and it's rerouting it right there, okay? So Robert thinks that this thing is overheating although it is having a problem with the fuel pump as well. Um, I've been running it for about 45 minutes right now with my air conditioner and it's working. So I'm gonna put this back away for now, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. But anyway, yeah, I think it is an airflow problem as well. And that's helping a lot right now. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see how long it lasts. We only got about two more hours of sunlight, but I wanna show you this place. Oh, let me tell you what my plan is. My plan is, why have I put this off so long? I ordered two soft starts for both rooftop air conditioners of Miranda. I did it on Vanna White immediately. I've had this RV for three and a half years and still have not put soft starts on those air conditioners. So I do think that's going to help a lot. Um, I can't do that kind of work, so I know a guy. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. I'm in Missouri, so I might as well stop in one more time. See if my buddy Robert can help me put on two soft starts on those AC units and see if that will allow that craftsman uh, to power one of the air conditioners. We'll see. But I do want to mention, this is probably the clearest I have ever seen this river, and I never know what it's called. Somebody in the comments knows, but I've, I mean, I've taken you guys here. It's almost always nasty, muddy, and it's flooding around here, and it's just beautiful. Look, the little rope swing right, right in front of us here. You can climb the tree. Uh, I don't know about all that. And then get on the rope. Eh, I don't know about all that. But no, it's really pretty here. As far as I know, this campground is a 14 day max campground. So the fact that I'm here all by myself on a Thursday, in a, it's still summertime for me. Is it gonna be summertime when you see this? Yes, it will be. But yeah, I know all the kids go back to school in September, so they tend to clear out a little bit but it's a really, really, really pretty spot. And I love this campground. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Harriman, uh, Harriman Hill Access. Yes, yeah, this is my favorite free campground in all of the Midwest. It is. And that's the first time I've camped right there. It's awesome. I'm gonna go feed these two hungry kitties and I'll get back to you later tonight. Wait, speaking of hungry kitties, look, they're both in the dash. 
Got Jax right here. We got Miss Terra Bear right there. The two best kitties in the world. Oh, you got Scratchums? You got Scratchums? Dad needs to clean the windshield. It's pretty bad, Jax. Tara, should I take care of that? Okay, I'll take, should I feed the kitties? Are you guys hungry? No, you're not hungry, Jax? You guys hungry? We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna. Picking up a love friends, fill up the car to live best because we wanna. We wanna. Yeah, we just wanna have fun. The trunk's full of wine. We're gonna stay up, have the time of our lives. The night is in. What an awesome night we shared here at this campground, this campsite. Something about nature that just always puts me in the best mood. And Jax and Tara had such a fun time. That was actually Tara's first ever catnip experience. I don't know why I've waited this long. Jax just never really warmed up to catnip. So I, I had forgotten that other cats could be different and she loved the catnip. So that was awesome. Going to be packing it up here at this little river spot and moving a little bit farther down the road today. So I'm gonna start editing this morning with some coffee and uh, Jackson, Tara and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for joining us guys. Have a good day.